if you're watching this, odds are that I might not even be alive. I could be dead. I could be alive. This was my last moment. I still remember the day that I got the letter. I was walking down the hall. Just walking. There's no one there. It was late at night. I had been laid off from my job at the office. My job was to design new toys for kids. That's what I spent my day doing. One day I came to the office and it was just cleared out. Everyone was gone. Everyone. Things were packed up. So, I walked down the hall. By my name, I'm getting way ahead of myself. My name is Bruce. I went into the into the conference room, and I remembered all of the days that I had there with the people. We drank some coffee and sat down on the photocopier and took inappropriate photos of our butts and other things that are not even worth talking about. I remember the conveyor belt, how many times we... How many times we pressed the down button and would Christmas tree it, so, because we had like a hundred floors in our building. And I remember, I remember how much, how much work we had to do. And when we had Christmas tree the elevator, it'd take forever for people to load the new, the new toys, the Legos, the, the Batmobiles, uh, all types of different toys. It would take forever and they would whine about it, we'd laugh. So I decided, if I was going to get laid off, I might as well have one more look around the place that I've been spending the last 25 of my 25 years of my life is. As I looked around, I realized that this was my home. I didn't have a home. My wife, well, she divorced me. And and my kids, they like the toys that I make and then they grew up and they thought it was ridiculous. While they were at school, going to college, I was focusing on building the new Barbie, and that's what I was. I was actually the lead person in, in uh, design and advertisement. I was good at my job, but I realized that maybe, maybe I wasn't. I remember how many times, this is the first place that Jenny and I met, that's my ex-wife. Then all, all of the TVs, and then I realized that they were spying on us. But I didn't say anything, because I was a loyal employee, number 599. There were so many. But in here, this was the chief room of security. And I got to come here any time I want with soda and popcorn. I got to come here any time that I wanted to and spy on the employees, the hundreds of rooms of employees. And as I looked at the countless numbers, I realized that I'll never be able to spy on people again. And that's where the next story comes in, where I became a professional stalker. This took place on the second floor of the office building. See, remember, I told you this is where Jenny and I met, but really, I have been spying on Jenny for the past year. I threatened to tell the FBI that if I told the employees that they were being spied on, this company would be sued. And it didn't have a corporation, so odds are um, they would have been in for a multi-million dollar lawsuit. So, they told me that I could, any time that I wanted to, spy on the love of my life. And sure, I left little shrunken heads on her desk, and I left babies with their heads ripped off, you know, little plastic ones that I had built. I left uh, just different trinkets and things on her desk to show her that someone was out there caring about her. And she reacted very strangely. Um, she was the only one, by the way, who didn't put her butt on the photocopier, which I was sad about. We actually had a wall. It was called the butt of photocopiers. And what it was is it was a wall that had all the pictures from everyone, and we tried to match their butts up. Um, of course, we did this um, not on time. We had to punch up time slips because we were paying by the hour. And if I could be paid to sit on a photocopier with my butt, then I, I would like to do that. But, of course, there's no job that pays for that. So, here I am just making Barbies and stuff. But going through this hallway, these pictures, it reminds me of the first time that Jenny and I bumped in, into each other. Well, actually, I didn't bump into Jenny. I more, like, slammed into her. See, I knew she was going to come around that counter because I went into the spy room. And I was carrying some coffee, and I was like, hey, I should go get her one. So I ran around the corner, 
And what I did is I smashed into her and I poured hot coffee all over her arm and I gave her third degree burns. And at that moment, I felt a burning passion for her. It was some type of love. It was almost like we were in he- she was in heat. Actually, I think she was on heat or in heat or whatever you want to call it because I burned her with the coffee. But um, we probably shouldn't ponder on uh, <laughs> uh, small matters like that. That plant over there, I bought her plant for her. That was a pot plant. Um, I, I don't know if she ever knew what type of plant it was, but I don't know if anyone ever knew. I mean, they, you would think they would see the four leaves and they'd be like, hey, that's a pot plant. But not a pot pa- plant like you could smoke. It's actually a pot plant that grows like silver pots. And so I took one off and I cooked some ramen for her. And when I gave it to her, she screamed. Um, I, I think she was afraid that I was going to burn her again or set her on fire. I really felt like we had a burning passion, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think the feeling was mutual. And then down here, this was the first place. When I Christmas treed the conveyor belt, uh, it flew through the elevator shaft and crashed through six floors, and it landed. Um, she was broken. Her arm was broken. Her, her leg was broken. Her collarbone was broken. And I decided that this would be a moment to propose to her. So what I did is I pulled out a shrunken head um, that looked like her and a voodoo doll. And I took the voodoo doll's head off. And I put the shrunken head on, and then I proposed to her. And to this day, I still don't know if she said yes or no because she was unconscious. Um, I thought she was dead, but, you know, you can propose to ghosts and stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. And so what I did is I proposed to her, and I think she said yes. Um, I gr- she grunted in her sleep, and I think she said yes. Um, so when she woke up, she had amnesia, and I told her that we had been married for 10 years. So she started treating me like her husband, and I may have taken advantage of her. Um, I painted this on the hallway to confuse people, the Stanley parable. Uh, I really have this big affliction for sta- uh, Flat Stanley and the Yellow Brick Road. So I thought, why not make it Flat Stanley and the Yellow Brick Road? So I made this yellow brick road, and it was actually like a line because I didn't have enough paint. And it went all the way through the office. um, It led from my room to Jenny, so she could never lose her way. So she started to believe that she was my wife. um, So maybe I did take advantage of her a bit. And as you can see, my um, office was on like this third floor, and her office is like on the seventh floor. So, um, it took a lot of painting, and this is where I messed up. I may have been on a little bit of pot, um, but not the pot that you smoke. Um, I may have actually had a silver pot on my head. And as you can see, I got a little intense here. Um, but I, I really am getting ahead of myself here. So Jenny and I um, aren't officially married, but don't tell her that. Don't show her this video. But remember, I could already not be alive when you see this video. So, um, as, we, as we follow this, um, I decided that I was going to become the next avatar. So when I was going through here, I painted myself yellow and I was standing on a chair and I said that I was the new avatar. But not like the anime one, not the anime one, the one with the movie with the little blue guys that run. Well, they're not little, but tall. They're really tall blue guys, but the girl's pretty hot. Um, But don't tell Jenny that, okay? Because she's really jealous. And this plant right here, this plant holds a lot of deer a lot of dear memories for me. See, this plant was called the Lou. And the reason why it's called the Lou is because there was a guy named Lou, and he went to the bathroom there in the plant. Um, he may have drunk. He may have been drunk. He may have been very drunk. And he may have been drunk from what I gave him. See, so I had this bottle of vodka, and I thought, you know, why not give it to Lou and be a good friend? So I gave it to him, and he drank it, and then he thought he was a cat because I laced also his drink with some LSD. And he um, he drank it and then went to the bathroom of the plant. So we started to call it the Lou, and then everyone was like, hey, Lou went to the bathroom there, so let's go on Lou. We didn't actually go on Lou, we went in Lou. That sounds really wrong, but we went into the plant Lou. So I got laid off, though, and I don't understand, you know. I f- maybe I fired some rockets in the office. Uh, maybe I brought in an AK-47 and 
um, try to scare my boss. I thought it was a movie prop. I mean, when I bought it on eBay, it said it was. I bought it from some guy named uh, Muhammad Ali, but um, I, I don't know. He sounded. He said that he was. Um, he lived in Texas, um, but it took five business days, which doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, maybe I filled one of my offices with water and tried to take a, uh, a dip. You know, I was skinny dipping in my office. It was something I needed to mark off my bucket list, you know? Um, and it's, it's, it's frustrating because I tried to share with everyone and I opened the door and it kind of flooded the whole seventh floor and then the sixth floor and fifth floor. And by the time it got to the first floor, it kind of thinned out a little bit, which, which was nice. Um, but I decided that. I wasn't just going to lead a yellow brick road to Jetty's office. I was going to lead it to all my friends and all my enemies. So they get confused and they'd all follow this road and they'd all go to one place and they'd find out that my true identity, what my true identity was. So as I went through the office, I realized that this place, this place really, really held a lot of memories for me. I met my, my first wife, non-wife. I got to go on Lou. I got to paint a yellow brick road. <laughs> I got to paint a yellow brick road throughout the whole office. And then I switched everyone's locks on the filing cabinets and changed all their names around. So it kind of gave them, it was kind of like a collage. Now what I did is I glued all of their, so what if I glued their locker shut? Who cares about that? And this this is what I call the quiet room, where you go in circular motions until you throw up, and then your boss tells you to go home. So I use this day I use this place many times, but I really, really am getting in my head of myself here. Why am I getting laid off? I have been doing this job for sixteen hours straight. I've been at this office making this video. And I don't even know if I'll still be alive when it's finished. I made this. Do you hear me, Cherry? Cherry is my boss. He's a little red. A little red on the face sometimes. But I don't like to question his judgment. Because um, I'm afraid that he may call the rest of his friends. Like the Mandarin. Um, and Cucumber. And people like that. But... <sighs> I still don't understand. You know, I fired rockets, maybe I swam skinny dipped in here, maybe I ran through all the floors naked, but everyone does it. I took pictures of my bum on the photocopier. It really doesn't make any sense. Maybe I was watching Netflix episodes. I was watching binge watching Arrow. But Arrow and Sons of Anarchy and Breaking Bad was all research. So it doesn't make any sense to me. It was all research, you know, because I had to make action figures and stuff, but I really miss my boss. And and I just don't know. On the letter, all it says is, it's over. And then it says my name. So, I really want to thank you guys for, for watching this and listening to me and, and being there for me when I needed you. And I know I'm talking to myself and I know no one, maybe they'll dust off this video someday and see it. But I wanted you guys to know who I am. I am the master. And my name is Bruce Wayne, or Batman, and I live in an insane asylum, and I'll see you guys later.